In Thor the Dark World, what is Dr. Jane Foster filled with? Cum? Cum? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's starting. Oh, good. Just in time. Yeah. Mm. Oh, this is the 1998 Avengers with Uma Thurman, Ray Fiennes, and Shaquille O'Neal. Don't you mean Sean Connery? Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. I always get them confused. Yeah, it's understandable. They're both black. So I really like Scarlett Johansson in this movie too. I thought she was much better utilized than in the the other movies. Uh, yeah, that character. a little more realistic. I hear so. you guys are talking about the new Captain America movie. That's right. You two think you're hot shots, huh? Mm -mm. Well, we're gonna see how good your memory is. I've written down some comic book movies on these cue cards, and you're gonna tell me what the plots were. Jay, Iron Man. The first Iron Man. Iron Man one, yes. Um, Tony Stark builds an Iron Man suit. And then Jeff Bridges builds a bigger Iron Man suit, and then they fight. Correct. <laughs> Mike, X-Men Origins, Wolverine. Uh, Wolverine uh, hides in Alaska. Uh, uh, hold on, give me a minute here. <laughs> <laughs> he, he has, oh, he has to team up with Sabretooth at the end on a nuclear reactor he gambits in it uh can we phone a friend no oh so ryan reynolds is deadpool and he has cyclops's eyes wolverine's claw uh, uh, arm swords and then they all fight in the end correct i would have accepted gambit isn't it okay <laughs> jay yes hulk which, which hulk? hulk the hulk ang lee hulk yes that's the hulk the other one is the incredible hulk i just said hulk Oh my god, what happened in that one? He becomes the Hulk, and then Nick Nolte becomes another Hulk, and then they fight. Correct. <laughs> Mike. Yes. The Fantastic Four, the Dark Surfer rises. I only saw the first one. Incorrect. Jay, Green Lantern. I didn't see Green Lantern. You can pass that over to me. Yeah. Uh, pass. Mike. Pass to Mike. Okay. Okay, the Green Lantern. Ryan Reynolds is a... Uh, New York taxi cab driver by day, and um, I, that's completely wrong. I have no idea what his <laughs> profession was. He, oh my God, I know he flies around in space. There's a there's a fish man. I see. I saw this movie. Okay, I really saw this movie. Ryan Reynolds gets the power of the Green Lantern somehow. I don't remember how. Does he have to stop a bad guy at the end? I'm sure he did. Well, that's I the think, plot. I think there's a monster on an alien planet that wants to to. To do something, <laughs> uh, he he he. Correct, Jay. X Men Three. Oh God, uh, mutant rights, <sighs> and and then everybody fights. Correct, Mike. Aren't you a lucky fucker? Okay. The Wolverine. Uh, can you be more specific? The Wolverine. Which X Men film are you talking about? The Wolverine. <laughs> the new one. Where he goes to Japan? That would be the Wolverine. Oh, because you already asked me about X-Men Origins. That was the X-Men Origins Wolverine. <laughs> this one is the Wolverine, which is a distinct entity from X-Men Origins Wolverine. Thank you. You might be confused because Hugh Jackman is in both movies. I am, believe me. Uh, Wolverine is, is uh, living as a hermit, and then a Japanese businessman who he saved during World War II in, from a nuclear bomb explosion says, I want to talk to the Wolverine, uh, and, and a Japanese girl goes and gets him and brings him to Japan. He says, I'm dying. I need your Wolverine powers to live? And then the ultimate plot is that the Japanese man wanted to put himself inside a giant samurai suit and punch everything. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, the, what was the lady's name? Not the not the, the lady with the big fingernails? No, she's like a, like a lizard lady. The lizard, yes, the poison ivy. <laughs> No, <laughs> whatever. I think your name was Poison Ivy. No, it wasn't Poison Ivy. Poison Oak. Uh, oh, Venom? <laughs> Anyways, uh, he fights her, or the girl fights him, and then uh, Wolverine pushes the, the, the robotic samurai off a cliff at the end. Hmm. Correct. Jay, Man of Steel. 
uh, 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 Superman destroys the audience. Correct. Mike, Spider-Man 3. Uh, Tobey Maguire dances like an asshole. <laughs> Correct. Jay, Daredevil. Ben Affleck can't see anything, and then he embarrasses himself. Correct. Mike, The Avengers. Uh... Correct. Jay, <laughs> Iron Man 2. Oh. Uh, Mickey Rourke sits around with his parrot for the whole fucking movie, and then they fight once. Correct. <laughs> Mike, Ghost Rider. I didn't see the first one. Correct. Jay, The Incredible Hulk. Uh, Edward Norton is the Hulk, and he fights another Hulk. Correct. Mike, yeah. Catwoman. Oh, I didn't see Catwoman. Nobody saw Catwoman. Correct. <laughs> Jay, The Fantastic Four. They go into space, they become superheroes, and then they have to stop Dr. Is that Sam Jackson? No, that's uh, Scarlett Johansson. Oh. Yeah, I, I thought the um, the plot was serviceable. I mean, you can't get too well, plotty with a movie like yeah, this. Yeah, this is a movie that really isn't about the plot. It's And every time there was stretches of exposition or science jargon, my eyes just sort of glazed over. Yeah. I was like, when is, when is Scarlett Johansson going to kick somebody? When so, are we but going to see her hindquarters? There, there are a number of shots like that in the movie. Yeah, we yeah. should point out that this is a movie that has a little something for everybody. Mm -hmm. you, know, you get, you got uh, uh, Scarlett Johansson in tight black leather, but you also get Mark Ruffalo nude with Harry Dean Stanton. Right. So they had a checklist. They're like, which dude should take all their clothes off? Chris Evans? No. Chris Hemsworth? No. Mark Ruffalo, yeah, oh yeah. And you know what'll make the scene even even hotter? Harry Dean Stanton. Harry Dean Stanton. He's 90 years old and he can barely walk. That's Mark, hot. put on these dirty clothes. Yeah. Iron Man 3 is the first post-Avengers film in the Marvel Films universe. It stars Robert Downey Jr. as an overpaid actor inside of a tin can suit who fights evildoers as the superhero Iron Man 3. His enemies this time include Guy Pearce as an old acquaintance with a grudge, Ben Kingsley as an old man with a beard, and Shane Black as an old school Hollywood screenwriter with an over-reliance on witty dialogue. Our next film is called Thor The Dark World and it's released by Marvel Studios. And it's also the second Thor film about Thor. After all this time, now you come to visit me, brother. Why? To mock. I need your help. In the film, Thor battles the alien from Prometheus, who returns with the black goo and is up to some wacky mischief. The alien elf wants to shoot his black goo through the nine realms as all of the holes converge in the sky above Stellan Skarsgård's house. Natalie Portman's stand-in is also in the film, and she sleeps the whole movie inside a time-traveling boat while pretending to have some sort of disease problem with her because black goo is in her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Thor 2 has some enjoyable moments, but with a plot that's so schizophrenic, you'll need to take some Thorazine to understand what's going on. What? Spoilers! I, I wouldn't, uh, it's weird that we're doing our recommendations off the bat, right, right up front, but uh, I wouldn't recommend it to, to little kids. No, we learned uh, from firsthand experience that little kids will be bored by this movie. Yeah, they'll be bored, and there's a lot of murder and violence in it. I know, it was yeah. great. And, and that's what I liked about it. <laughs> yeah. um, it had sort of uh, like a born Identity, uh, Mission Impossible kind of vibe mm -hmm. to the, the, the storyline and how things were executed. But yeah, there's uh, everyone gets shot. Every, everyone but Aaron Rodgers just shoots everybody. Yeah, it's yeah. so wonderful. Hey, Ratch! Rich! Rich, does Captain America kill people? Um... Or does he have a, like, a pussy code of ethics <laughs> like Superman or Batman? <sighs> we need answers! <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay. Well, get out! <laughs> get out then, if you can't help us. Wow. <laughs> the fuck out!
<laughs> I can't help us get the fuck out. Well, I was surprised when the Winter Soldier, whatever his name is, um, in comic book lore. His name is Bucky, which kept making me think of uh, uh, the Avenging Disco Godfather in this movie. Every time he's, he, they're talking about him being evil now, I was just thinking, Bucky, what have they done to you? Bucky, what has you done to your thing? What has he had? What has he had? What has he had? Yeah, when Bucky takes his mask off, and it's like, and then uh, several fat guys with beards in the audience go, <gasps> Yeah. And everyone else goes, what? I didn't know who that was. I saw the first Captain America movie in the theater and it's left my brain. Yeah. What does that mean? Filmed over 12 years with the same cast, James Gunn's Guardians of the Galaxy is a groundbreaking story of growing up as seen through the eyes of a child named Star-Lord, who literally grows up on screen before our eyes. Well, Jay, what did you think of Guardians of the Galaxy? Do you think when, when Disney was saying, who should we get to direct our next big Marvel blockbuster? They said, I know, let's get that guy who made that movie where Ellen Page rapes Rain Wilson. <laughs> I think that's exactly what That's I'm exactly doing. how the conversation went. God, this job is so boring. It's putting me to sleep faster than Bill Cosby. Hey, did you hear Bill Cosby was recently spotted at an AA meeting? Really? I didn't know Bill Cosby was an alcoholic. Oh no, it was a meeting for amateur anesthesiologists. <laughs> hey, did you know Bill Cosby used to do ads for puddin' pops? Well now pops is puddin' it in them. <laughs> Hey, did you know Bill Cosby kept all of his sweaters from The Cosby Show? Really? Those sweaters always seem so hot and stuffy to me. Yeah, he'd let the ladies wear them, hoping they'd pass out. Hey, Jay, how do Bill Cosby's dates spell Jell-O? How? J-E-L. Hey, do you know what Bill Cosby's wife's nickname for him is? What's that? Serial rapist. Hey, speaking of falling asleep and getting raped, have you seen Ant-Man? Yep. Well, I believe now we should talk about Ant-Man. Ant-Man is the latest Marvel movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe from Marvel Films. It stars Paul Rudd as Ant-Man, a Marvel superhero ripped right from the pages of a Marvel comic book. In the Marvel film, Ant-Man is hired by a former Ant-Man to break into a building to steal a bad Ant-Man suit, which will most definitely not eventually be worn by an evil businessman. Original director Edgar Wright left the project when Marvel wanted to stifle his creativity and create connections within the film to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. He was replaced by Peyton Reed, who ironically directed a film called Yes Man. From the director of The Conjuring, James Wan, comes his most frightening film to date, Aquaman. Jason Mimosa, Amber Heard, Nicole Kidman, Patrick Wilson, Dolph Lundgren, and Willem Dafoe round out the cast of people that look like they have no idea what's going on around them. Why it's a spectacle of fish magic, bad acting, sharks, tidal waves, bad acting, CGI water hair, and embarrassing costumes that all fit snugly into a boilerplate plot about a merman becoming a king or something. Take Thor, Lord of the Rings, Black Panther, and Splash! Put them in a blender, then just add water, no pun intended, and voila! You've got mail! Well, Bible Man wanted <laughs> wanted to recruit the the lobster people to join his his <laughs> his quest to take over the surface. This is the movie because the surface has garbage and battleships. Yes, that, and that's the thing too is 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 the the Black Panther comparison, where you have this society that has apparently uh, solved all of their problems or has a flawlessly perfect society of- yeah. and technology. Techno and supreme technology, pr potentially no hunger, no needs for the civilian population, no internal problems, yeah. basically. But they still operate on a, uh, a feudal fight to the death mentality. And yeah. Patrick Wilson 
the king of everyone who wants to unite everyone to conquer the surface world because of uh, garbage. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I guess, I, I, do you know how fucking big the oceans are? I mean, yes, we, we have ships, battleships that uh, uh, float around on the surface and people throw garbage in the water. There's garbage in the water. Um, and Patrick Wilson, as, as a threat or a warning, makes a huge tidal wave that washes all the trash up on land. And really? some warships. And some warships, too. And yeah. really, that's all I need to do. All he has to really do is come up and float in the air and go on CNN and go, hi, I'm the king of the Atlanteans. We're real. We're down here. Yeah. Stop putting your garbage in the water. If he had any forethought or any leadership, yeah. he would say, we can easily like create a tidal wave that will drown all of your major cities. You don't really have to conquer the, the surface world. Wolverine, or The Wolverine, is the second attempt to make a movie just about Wolverine. Except for the first three X-Men movies. Oh, snap. Oh, no, you didn't. You ain't all that and a bag of potato chips. Wasn't there a critic that said that the first Wolverine movie was all that in a bag of potato chips? Now I could go on and on about this film because it was indeed all that in a bag of potato chips. In this movie, Logan travels to Japan to say goodbye to a Japanese man his character wouldn't care less about saying goodbye to. While he's there, he discovers some kind of sinister plot about something. Action happens, romance happens, there's fighting and shooting, and then all is resolved at the end when Wolverine throws a giant robot off a cliff. So what social injustice do you think the new X-Men movie will be an analogy for? Hmm. The, the we are the 99%? Hmm. Gay marriage? Possibly, sure. Gun control? Hmm, that's a good one, yeah. Abortion? Well, whatever it is, I'm sure they'll handle it in the most heavy-handed, ham-fisted way possible. I'm sure it will be. Oh my god, it stinks back there. Mr. Plinkett smells horrible. Yeah, I know. Plus, he snores, too. He's also not a very good cuddler. Hey, since the city is paying to rebuild Mr. Plinkett's house, why are we still letting him stay here? We don't stand to gain anything from this. Hmm, you're right, Jay. It's a very good question. You know what we need is another brand new money-making scheme. How about we try running a legitimate business? No! You know, I've been thinking about it, and the biggest money-making schemes around right now are turning comic books into movies. Hey, you're right! If some comic book movie ideas were just original scripts today, they'd be laughed at. But because the source material is a comic book, they're treated with legitimacy for some reason, even though comics were originally just trash whipped up to sell ads to children. <laughs> That's right, Jay. You know, I've had an idea for a comic book. I would call it Horse Ninja. That's so stupid. Yeah, it's about a racehorse who tramples an enchanted ninja and then absorbs all of his ninja powers. I figured Jet Li could play the ninja and Sarah Jessica Parker could play the horse. Oh my God, that sounds like a great idea to make some money, but how do we sell the movie rights? Well, Jay, we gotta turn it into a comic book first. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. Come on, Jay, we're going to New York City where comic books are made. Oh, what does that old queen know? She didn't even show. Sent her copy boy to do the dirty work. Screw you, Miss Crowley. Do I really have a face like a horse? The Amazing Spider-Man 2 is directed by Mark Webb, who also directed The Amazing Spider-Man. This one also stars Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man and Emma Stone as Gwen Stacy. Again, it also has Dolly... Parton as Aunt May or whatever. The movie also has bad guys and fights and themes of family and revenge and love and heroism. Eventually, the movie ends. The Amazing Spider-Man is an experimental film designed to test the effects of an experimental moving plotline on the human brain. <laughs> You know what I thought happened? I thought like like the studio, Sony, had like they didn't know where to take the sequel. So they had like five different screenplays written up 
And then, like, the intern on his way to bring the screenplays, all five, to the executive, he, like, tripped and he fell. <laughs> and all the pages went all over the place. So we just started, like, taking them all and putting them in one big pile. And that's how the script got written. Yeah, this doesn't feel like a coherent story. This feels like a collection of scenes. <laughs> it's a collection of, of yes. uh, story threads. None of them have anything to do with each other. And, and stuff just kind of happens. I'm trying to think of what the plot was. There is, is there no plot. plot. There is no plot. There's is just a we... series of, there's yeah. uh, uh, Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone have their little relationship troubles because every single Spider-Man movie has to have them breaking up because he's Spider-Man. Every single one of them does that, doesn't it? And then there's, so there's that. Yeah. There's Electro, who is Jamie Foxx, who's a nerdy, awkward scientist man, just like Jim Carrey in the That's Batman exactly movie. what I was thinking for the whole fucking yeah, movie. That or, it, this is the Riddler uh, part two. Yeah, or Guy Pierce in uh, Iron Man 3, that type of character. He falls into a vat of eels. Electric eels. <laughs> Electric eels, and that somehow gives him superpowers. Well, they were they were experimenting with cross genetics in animals. Okay, so but that falling into the vat just makes you so fucking powerful with electricity for yeah. some reason. It, it also turns you evil because then he wants to kill uh, Spider-Man because Spider-Man didn't remember his name. Was that his motivation? Why did he all yeah, of a sudden hate Spider-Man? Because he had to. Yeah. Did you, uh, and did. Did uh, Electro's power, like once he became a superhero, it closed the gap in his teeth? <laughs> <laughs> like, what, what the fuck happened there? I, I... He can also fly. Uh, he's a, a, a physical body at first because they show him in the morgue and he yeah. wakes up and he falls out and then all of a sudden he's just pure electricity. Because he got like, into the power grid. He got, he got too power. much power or something. I don't know. Whatever. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> really? Who gives a fuck? It doesn't matter because that uh, plot will be over you in know, one second. They'll cut to something else that has nothing to do with at it. At the end of the movie, he blows up. But he's he's an electric man. He's he's made out of electricity. He's been dissolving himself for half the movie. Yeah. Who cares if he blows up? <laughs> well, their logic was is that a battery would explode. But yeah, he has no. He had no body at that. He's point. not a physical thing. Yeah. The battery is just a thing of liquid acid that transfers uh, uh, a charge <laughs> from one side to the other, and it blows up because it overheats. But he was just electricity. Yep. But they should have used did you, and then I didn't, When did they put the power meter on his head that said what his charge oh, was? Oh, that was the best part. It had the little bar graph. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. And the end, it said, it actually said, explode. <laughs> Better luck next time? I hate this movie so fucking much. <sighs> well, that was disappointing. Yeah. After six hours of cleaning up blood, all we wanted to do was see Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. Yeah, who would have thought after three weeks the movie would still be selling out? They should have just called it Admission Impossible. Well, it's a good thing they made a new Fantastic Four movie. Plenty of seats left for that. Oh my god, so many seats. But I was still disappointed though. Why? Because the movie was so terrible? No, because I was hoping it was going to be a re-release of my favorite 1990s golf training video. Fantastic Four! Mike, why would movie theaters in the year 2015 need to re-release a golf video from the 90s? I don't know, Jay. You tell me. The Victor Von Doom character, he's a bit of a misanthrope in the beginning. He's like, eh, you know, yeah. humanity sucks and blah, blah, blah. And then he loves Sue Storm. So there's a little love triangle thing going on with him and... Uh, 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 uh. Stretch Richard Reed. Richard Reed. Yeah. Richard Reed. What, is, that, is that his name? His name's Reed Richards. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, is it Richard Reed, a movie reviewer? I believe so, yeah. Uh, Richard. Richard Gear. Richard Reed. There's a Richard Roper. Richard Roper and Reed. Uh, Rex Reed. Rex Reed. Rex Reed. The movie starts off okay. There's a nice indicator of what the reshoot stuff is in, in the form of Kate Mara's horrible wig. Uh, you should not be thinking of Samurai Cop when you watch a $200 million movie, but this is what we got. Really? For all that money, you can't get a natural wig? Well, they ran out of money by they, that point. They I ran guess. down to the party supply store. We need a blonde wig. We have a Marilyn Monroe one. Good enough. We'll straighten it. Hey, have you seen Captain America? I have. Captain America is Marvel's latest feature-length teaser trailer for the Avengers movie, and it's a World War II era action movie about the origin of Captain America. Captain America all of a sudden has a racially diverse 
group of super soldiers that help him. There's there's an Irish guy, an English guy, a French guy, there's a black guy, and there's a Asian guy yes. who has like an emo haircut. <laughs> and, and, and it's like, what? The only thing it's missing is someone in a wheelchair. R right, right. Uh, or a woman, a woman. Or a woman, soldier. there wasn't a woman. Yeah. There needed to be a Latino it's woman. It's always a Latino woman. Right. Not that there's anything wrong with racial diversity. I'm all for it but this was World War II. I don't think there was even racially integrated troops during World War II, like where black soldiers fought alongside white soldiers. Like when they had this, that shot in the forest where all the soldiers were gathering around Captain America, there was like five or six black guys mixed in it. And visually it looked like Vietnam yeah. to me because that was kind of the visual style of Vietnam. I mean, black soldiers fought in World War II. They even fought in the Civil War. Um, but they had their own segregated units mm. and, and, you know, or they were kind of like the cooks and stuff like that. And, you know, again, not being racist, but that's historically accurate. Yeah. And then there's like a, the Asian guy and he's like, I'm from Fresno. And I'm like, okay, shouldn't you be in an internment camp? <laughs> and when they kind of pander or do things like that in a movie, especially if it's a historical movie, it's offensive to the intellect. To be fair, it, it wasn't a film about World War II. It was a film that took place in World War II. It wasn't like the story of this regiment, World War II. Then it's like, okay, you have to be yeah. accurate. Um, it was a fantasy movie that took place in World War II, so they, there is a bit of a leeway to kind of do stuff like that. But the fact that they feel like they have to is sort of just, I don't know. The, the Asian guy with the emo haircut <laughs> who, who was talking on a cell phone just <laughs> Threw me out of the movie. The Man of Steel is the new reboot of a remake to a sequel of Superman. It stars Henry Cavill, Amy Adams, a 7-Eleven logo, and Kevin Costner as a Sears logo. In this film, Superman punches a bunch of energy while Metropolis is destroyed and all of its citizens die, except for Lawrence Fishburne and a secretary. General Zod also wants the Kodak to save Krypton. <laughs> In hindsight, I'm glad they didn't try and dig up the, the John Williams theme. Yeah. Oh, that, that like, would have been so out of place. That would have been so out of place. Or can you imagine like the, the end of that movie when like buildings are collapsing and everybody's dying is da 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 My baby! Da 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 9-11. Can we talk about uh, product placement in this movie? It, it was pretty obnoxious. I, product placement's fine by me if it's very subtle and woven in, you know, seamlessly. Right, we've talked about that before. Yeah, sure, I'm okay with it, but this, this, this movie, why does this movie need product placement? Like well, you that? know, there's that, that uh, just take one shot of Superman flying, it's a CG shot. Mm. Uh, IHOP paid for one of those shots. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. So does 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven paid for I'm one sure of those shots, a, too. I'm sure they have a super gulp, big gulp. Oh, with sure. Superman on it. And, and, you know, every shot had 7-Eleven in the background in Smallville. <laughs> and then the IHOP. The, the IHOP's involved in the storyline. <laughs> it, felt, it felt so, like, dated, like, that, that heavy of product placement. Sure. You don't really see that too much anymore. Other it's than, like that sequence in Mac and Me when they're dancing in the McDonald's. Captain America Civil War follows the lives of different mothers on Mother's Day. Sandy is happily divorced until she finds out her ex-husband eloped with a much younger woman. Now she must learn to deal with big changes in her life as her two boys now have a stepmom. Sisters Jesse and Gabby get an unexpected surprise from their mother, who is not happy to find out Gabby is a lesbian and Jesse is married to a man of color. Miranda doesn't have any kids and is focusing on her career. Kristen is enjoying life as a new mother, but is feeling pressure from her boyfriend to get married. Bradley is trying hard to be the best parent for his two girls since their mom passed away last year. However, his idea of Mother's Day is pretending it doesn't exist at all. Um, Captain America and his best friends are now in a, a giant tiger. Uh, <laughs> somewhere, I'm assuming in, in Wakanda. The Wakanda is, is is the character's name actually the Black Panther? Yes. Yeah. Was this made in the 1960s? Yes. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. 
Uh, well, I think it actually came first, though. I think the comic book character came first. How do you know when the Black Panther movement started, Cracker? I mean, if Marvel had the the rights to, uh, if Disney's Marvel whatever had the rights to Spider-Man earlier, they would try and establish him, seeds of him in an earlier film or something. Here, it's just like, I'm going to go visit this kid that you've never heard of before. It's the most fun scene in the movie. The scene when he goes and It's the only him? scene where Tony Stark feels like Tony Stark. Yeah, he's very dour in this one. He has yeah. a couple little moments. Him coming on to like, or making comments about how hot Aunt May is. Well, they, they had to put that in there, because the minute you cast Marissa Tomei, that's every message board on every website ever is like, I feel weird about being attracted to Aunt May now. I was always attracted to Aunt May. Uh, strangely, everyone seems to think that the UN has actual powers. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was the most jarring thing for me. <laughs> well, the UNs, they've gotten together and the UN has decided this thing. Everyone's like constantly, but oh. it's the UN. Oh, it's the UN. Yeah. You know, that could This made... isn't like the League of Nations. <laughs> <laughs> the League of Nations. That was a precursor to the UN. I know. Um, they should have had a scene. They where... were equally as effective. No, no, no. They should have had a scene where the, the Cap Captain Rogers or whatever, Aaron Rogers, what's his name? Uh, America. Captain America, yeah. Where he's this like. the title of the movie. Yeah. He's like, uh, he's like, all right, I'll sign this accord. And then, like, some sort of like horrific monster comes, and then the UN has to pass the resolution. <laughs> and, takes like, and they're all just like, should we go? Well, it's it's got to get a secondary vote from the third council of the UN. You know, Uruguay is holding us up. Yeah. Red tape and bureaucracy of the UN and the general incompetence is uh, holding. And then the monster has killed 25,000 people. <laughs> and then Captain America just goes, I told you. And then he goes, Avengers, assemble! <laughs> and then they just fly out of their headquarters and they go fight the monster. <laughs> and then that's the end of the movie. But we all love bureau bureaucracy and red tape <laughs> and miserable, vengeful hatred in our superhero films. Well, Rich, how does do you know much about the Civil War comic story? I was, I was just about to talk about I this. I assume the, so. The the spark that starts the debate in the Civil War comic book. It's been a good decade since I've read it, but uh, there's this group of superheroes fighting a supervillain whose superpower is he can explode. Okay. And they punch him, which makes him explode in the middle of a grade school playground. That's amazing. Why is that in this movie? I know! It's the most shockingly horrible thing! <laughs> in the comic book Civil War, 300 children die! <laughs> That'll start a political debate. <laughs> not, a, not a dozen people exploding by accident in an office building? Yeah. yeah. They needed something more shocking visually. It was obvious. I mean, yeah, thing. but they obviously they're not going to kill a bunch of children. No, well, no, they... it didn't have to be children. But <laughs> well, it's building. Oh, well. mm. They got to get him fun again before he's just too old. I mean, look at look at look at Don Cheadle. Yeah, he's drying up. <laughs> the man is just drying up. I think they. I think the script had to make him a cripple because he can't walk anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they had no choice. <laughs> A thief, one thug, an assassin, a maniac, and an angry little tree. Hold on. Everyone's favorite heroes are back. The Guardians of the Galaxy? Nope. Marvel fanboy shills Mike and Jay. Witness their amazing powers of liking a movie that's fun and likable. Marvel at their ability to do nothing but hate on DC while sucking Marvel's dick. Be amazed that they seem to enjoy movies sometimes that are enjoyable, while disliking other movies that are a huge fucking mess. It's time for Guardians of the Galaxies Volume 2! Well, back to our review. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. I thoroughly enjoyed this film. By the way, it's not in the movie, but there was either a trailer or a TV spot where uh, they, there's a joke in it that isn't in the final movie where I think it's the Nebula character confuses the name of the group and she calls it Gardens of the Galaxy. A Garden of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy. No. Why would we be the Gardens of the Galaxy? <laughs> that was our fucking joke in our review of the first movie. Um, Gardens, Guardians of the Galaxy. Gardens of the Galaxy. Gardens I would watch that movie. Yeah. Just a movie about people going across the universe and planting gardens. It stars Martha Stewart. Yeah, why not? Yeah. That's true, I remember that. I say if James Gunn is gonna steal from us, he should take better jokes. 
James Gunn doesn't need to steal from us. <laughs> in fact, it's it's better that he doesn't. I don't know. He's struggling. He's struggling to make it in Hollywood. He he is struggling to make like a finely crafted fun adventure movie <laughs> that's that's witty and charismatic and enjoyable to watch. It's probably because there was one screenwriter <laughs> who sat down and wrote a script instead of five, ten people all throwing in ideas. You got to put this in there. You got to put this in there. Yeah. And that's a true testament to the, to the screenwriting art. Pablo Picasso did not have six guys in suits going with this with brushes on his paintings. Like, Get out of here! <laughs> Just to fuck away from your paintings! Put this, put a little flower over here. Can you, can you imagine uh, Michelangelo like painting the Sistine Chapel? And then like- All these like, guys with glasses coming up. Disney suits guys come up with like, <laughs> with, like cherry pickers. And they're like, what are you doing? You ruined my ceiling. Studies have shown that people will enjoy this more if everybody's smiling. Right, right. What if, what if God was not touching that finger of man? What if they were just high-fiving? Market research suggests high-fives appeal to all demographics. And we don't want to alienate non-religious people, so can it not be God? Yes, can it just be some kind of androgynous uh, entity? Maybe, maybe a giant Coke can. You want to replace the god with the Coke can? <laughs> That's movie making today. It's true, yeah. Everything's replaced by a giant Coke can. You know what I also had an arc? The first Indiana Jones film. What is the arc? Oh, I... So I'm disappointed. <laughs> Damn it. You. So my initial thought was, ouch, don't do that, Disney. Movie theaters are something that's dying. And then today I thought, let them die. Let them die. Only today you thought that? It's been boiling up inside me. I thought, let them die. Uh, keep the small art house theaters for the, the niche films here and there. Because when I go to those, it's quiet, people are respectful. There's a boring ass movie on the screen that <laughs> nobody wants to see, but myself and a handful of other elderly people. Keep those running. Uh, but the multiplexes need to die. Um, because one, think of all the money you spend in a year buying concessions and buying movie tickets. You know what you could do with that money? You could buy an 80 to 120 inch high definition four or 8K television, right? Think about that. Let's talk long-term investments here. The, the people that we're talking about that go to these movies, they're not thinking about long-term investments though. Well, I'm gonna lay out a, a multi-point plan <laughs> oh, okay. on, on a Great. big thing. So with that money, you could buy a, a gigantic TV in your living room and or a high-speed internet connection. Studios then, when Star Wars The Last Jedi, for example, comes out, you wanna watch this in your home, it's gonna cost you 25 to 50 bucks. I know that's a model that I think some studios are working on, where you, you pay through the roof because you can have four or five, six people come over to your house and watch it. Sure. So it ends up being about 50 bucks. I'll pay that. It's almost like a convenience fee too. I would gladly pay more to not have to go to a theater and have people uh, uh, munch popcorn in my ear and make weird noises. Uh, the group of guys I sat directly next to in this theater, one, the guy I sat directly next to was horribly sick with a cold. Uh, he was visibly digging into his nose and eating his own boogers. And uh, he smelled and he was constantly coughing and munching on food in my fucking ear. And also in the hallway leading into the theater, someone vomited all over the floor and nobody cleaned it up. Uh, I, I, I highly, I'm just so annoyed because I, I think I was just distracted the whole time because I'm trying not to breathe in this guy's coughing in my face. And, and I'm just like, oh God, when is the fucking movie going to be over? So I think that it, it made a huge dent in my enjoyment of the film. Okay. Um, and because I was distracted and the guy kept going, oh, wow. Oh, ooh, that's got to hurt. I'm like, stop fucking talking. Yeah. Internalize. Um, and then they go, oh, yeah, we gotta get back to Asgard to, to kill uh, 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 Resident Evil or whatever her name is. 
<laughs> Not Resident Evil. Resident Evil? He's, oh, because she's wearing Vampire black. Underground. Vampire Assassin? What? Kate Blanchett. Is Kate it? Blanchett. Isn't she in Vampire Squad? <laughs> What's that fucking movie, everybody? Are you talking about the Underworld oh, movies? Oh, that's... That's Kate Beckinsale. No, Kate Blanchett. That's kind of why it was fun to see her in this, too. Because you think of Kate Blanchett and you think of, like, classy, you know, classy movies. And here she's just, like, hamming it up. Was she the Lord of the Rings movie. girl? Yeah, she's in Lord of the Rings. That's that lady. That is that lady. The whole time I thought... She's it... also been in many, many other films. I thought it was Kate Beckinsale. Because she has black hair. Yes, Kate Blanchett does not normally have black hair. She does in this movie. And she's wearing like all black latex, which is like the Underworld movies. So. Yeah, I think the I Kate's... very vaguely can understand your confusion. Kate, black hair. I mostly chalk it up to dementia, but I can understand just a little bit what you're talking about. All right, you two. I'm going to ask you questions about the Thor movies, and you're going to answer them. Well, I mean, this should be pretty easy. We've seen both of them. And they are very memorable. Right, right, right. All right, then. In the prologue to the first film, who did the Asgardians wage war with? The, the Kryptonians? I remember the Rainbow Bridge. How many realms are there, according to Thor? This is one we can guess on. 48. I say two. Somewhere in between. 17. Lower. 14. Lower. 9. Correct! Yeah. <laughs> Name any of Thor's friends, the Warriors Three. Idris Elba. The, the girl. The girl. Pass. <laughs> Fandral, Volstag, and Hogan. Who can wield Minlor? <laughs> Mjolnir? No, it's Mjolnir. Mjolnir. Who can wield Mjolnir? What is a Mjolnir? <laughs> you just made that up. No, I did not. <laughs> Wait, is a Mjolnir a person or a thing? Anyone who is worthy can wield Mjolnir. It's oh. Thor's hammer, dipshit. Oh. <laughs> Why is Thor on Earth in the first film? He gets banished by his dad. Correct! Correct! <laughs> Good job. What ceremony was interrupted by a minor invasion of frost giants early in the first Thor movie? I know this. Loki go was going to be crowned like the king or something? Thor was going to be crowned king. <laughs> what other future Avenger makes his cinematic first appearance in the first Thor movie? It's Hawkeye. Bing! Yay! You got, got it, kiddo! That's the one scene I remember. <laughs> I don't remember that at all. Yeah. Who are the villains in Thor the Dark World? They're some sort of like albino elf creatures. Intergalactic space books. Can you can you be more specific than albino elf creatures? What more do you fucking need? They're, they're dark elves. In Thor the Dark World, what is Dr. Jane Foster filled with? Cum? Cum? <laughs> what is Thor's name? Does it have something to do with Loki? What is the twist at the end of Thor, the Dark World? That it's a light world. Loki is impersonating Odin. What? Oh, really? How does he look like Sir Anthony Hopkins? <laughs> You look like things. <laughs> what? I have no memory of this. Fucking I think he could just be making stuff up and we wouldn't even know. All I remember is space bugs. <laughs> There's always space bugs, Jay, always. <laughs> what do the Dark Elves need the Aether for? A super weapon. That's going to shoot a blue laser into the sky. Super weapon. No. Uh, resurrect their evil god king. No. Uh, take over the earth. No. Take over another realm. No. Super weapon. No. Resurrect their god king. No. We did see these movies, right? I think so. I, I, I definitely was in the theater and my eyes were open and I was looking at the screen. We reviewed both of them. We did? We should go back and watch our reviews so we know what we think of them. I'm starting to think there's something wrong with our brains. Mr. Blinker fell asleep. Oh, thank God. Oh. 
Now we can talk about Thor 3.